Today we're going to be showing you how to wire up a isolator switch for 24, 48 and 72 volt pump controllers. So you can see here that we've got one set up. We've got our control box here. So let's open this one up. So you should receive your glands. And your isolator switch. Take it out of the packaging, and there's no need to worry about this little packet of bits and pieces. You just put those back in the box. You take a decent sized Phillips head screwdriver and open up the casing. It's good to make sure that the isolator switch is in the off position, otherwise, you won't be able to get this open. Once you've got those all loosened off, it can be a little bit tricky getting it off, but there we go. So take our large flathead screwdriver and we undo these gland ports here. Set those aside. And we take our glands and add them to the bottom of the isolator switch. Making sure to get that nice and firm on there. And there's that. Now we take these caps off and remove these parts as well. Now you should have received a cable for your solar panel connections to your control box. So what we want to do is find the halfway point and with a pair of cutters just cut that in half. Now if you're wiring up close to the control box you don't need to cut it in half, you can just cut it down further along the line if you don't have far to go. So what we want to do is split these two and just separate them a little bit down the cable. Now, we also want to check which plug is going to go in the positive and which plug is going to go in the negative. So we've got them like that. So got the cable with the writing is going to be our negative and the cable without the writing is going to be our positive. And this is really important so that we know which of the terminals we're going to be wiring this into. Okay. So we want to make sure that when we're putting it in here that we're wiring it up in the right polarity. So we're going to have a negative here and our positive here and our negative is going to be the wire with the writing on it. So what we want to do is we want to take our Stanley knife or if you're confident with a pair of pliers, you can do this to strip the end off the wires. I like to use the Stanley knife on a bench or a flat surface and just roll it over. Do it for both wires and in a few seconds you've got that there. Okay, now take your pliers, run it around the part that you've just cut and very gently making sure not to put too much pressure on there otherwise you'll cut straight through the wires we strip the end of the insulation off there we go right, so we're just going to twist the ends of these wires just to make sure you don't have any dangly bits that are going to poke you in the finger once you've got them nice and tight Grab the end of your gland there, slide that on, and take this part. Now we want to make sure that we get this the right way around. If you have it backwards, it can be a bit of a pain to get on. So we make sure it's turned around this way. Slide these on one at a time to begin with, just to get them going. 
and there we go. Slide this up a bit. Okay. Yeah. So as we were saying, one with the writing is going to be our negative. So we slide them in through the bottom of the gland here, and we're going to put our negative into number four. Okay, now that we've got that in there, we'll take our small flathead screwdriver and we tighten that one up. Now that we've got it nice and firm, we take our second wire. Now, the second wire can be a bit fiddly to get in, so grab a pair of weasel nose pliers or pointy nose pliers and Get it in there nice and firm and do that one up as well. Try not to push it in too far because if you go too far then the clamp will tighten on the insulation and that can interfere with how clean the power comes through. So now that we've got that tightened up, push this part up into the gland and then we slide the bottom of the gland back up the cable and tighten that up. So make sure you get it nice and firm so that it's a watertight seal. Okay, so now we're going to do the second wire. Now this is for the incoming solar. So it's going to be a little bit trickier. So we split this one here, just as we did before. Okay. And now we're going to take this part, slide that on, and we're going to strip these again. So, Stanley knife again, taking just that little bit off. So same thing, we're going to have the one with the writing as our negative and the one with no writing as our positive. So making sure that we get this the right way around, we slide that onto there. Now this one, you need a bit of extra wire going up into the isolator, so you want to pull this right down low until you've got a fair bit of room around the top. Okay, now we slide these in here. Now these ones are a little bit trickier to get into place because as you can see, we're going around here. So you want to take your pliers and just bend a good hook into them just to make it that bit easier when you go to put them in position. Okay, so we're going to start with the negative wire and we're going to place that into number three. And then we're going to tighten that one up. Now we're going to take the positive wire going to bend that around and we're going to place it into position one. Okay. If you're having a bit of trouble getting the wire to stay there, just use the end of your finger to hold it in place. It can really be a big help. Okay, now that we've got those tightened up, we're going to push the wires in, give us a little bit more slack. And then we're going to tuck them in 
behind this little bar here. Just to make it a bit neater in there. Okay. Now that we've got that done, we're gonna slide the watertight seal back up into the gland. And we take the tightening cap and tighten it back onto there like so, making sure to get it nice and firm. And now that we've done that, we can take our lid and put it back on and do our screws back up. If you've got a multimeter, it's a good idea to plug it into the solar panels first before you connect it to your controller and just make sure that you've got the polarity correct. Okay, remembering that the wire with the writing is your negative and the wire with no writing is your positive. Take your multimeter probes and place them into the corresponding connectors. So you would put your negative probe here, your positive probe here, and as long as you get a positive voltage, then you've got it the right way around. If you get a negative voltage, then you need to open the controller back up, turning it off of course, open the controller back up and then just reverse the first two wires that we put in. And that's it. You're done.